and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and broadcasts on Davis Community Television, that's Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Uverse Menu 99. We're also online at dctv.davismedia.org as well as on YouTube. Today, I have a very crucial topic for our community. Uh, we are going to talk about the Yolo County Suicide Prevention and Crisis Services. And joining me to uh, discuss this very important topic are Sandra Sint. She is the clinical supervisor at the center, and Ting Ting Li. She is the Crisis Line Program Director for the Centre. Thank you both for coming here and thank you for the marvellous job you do at your centre. Now, I'm going to ask you a simple question and uh, who are the people you are helping? Well, thank you, Lynn, for having us. And uh, we have a variety of programs. Um, we run 24-hour crisis lines, and those include our suicide prevention crisis lines, our Ask Teen hotline, where um, Yolo County youth can call and talk about any issues they might be having with maybe school or bullying or their families or friends. And we also have a school um, uh, violence reporting line. And so that is a place, a safe place where people can um, report if they think maybe something dangerous is going to happen at their school or if a parent maybe has concerns. Um, we also have our school program, our Choose Life school program, where um, our credentialed teacher goes out to the secondary schools in Yolo County and she presents the Signs of Suicide program, which is essentially um, trying to teach them that, you know, depression is a treatable illness that suicide is usually kind of a product of untreated depression. And um, I think most importantly, where do you get help mm -hmm. um, if you or someone you know feels this way? Who can you talk to? Who can you turn to? Um, we also have our survivor support group, um, and that's our more formally called our Friends and Families of Suicide Loss. And th that's a support group for people who have lost someone to suicide. Um, and I find it really, really helpful for people that haven't really been able to talk about um, this really compli complicated loss and their really complex grieving. Um, and then lastly, we have just started partnering with um, Yolo, County uh, Yolo Community Care Continuum, um, their safe harbor house, and we do follow-up calls to um, clients that have been discharged to kind of see how they're doing, check in with them, and kind of make sure they're still doing well. When you mean they're being discharged, they're mean discharge from this particular from this particular crisis house crisis house mm -hmm. crisis residential program for folks who uh, need to need the particular support to being in a 24-hour residential program but don't quite need to be in the psychiatric hospital I so it's for um, yes. people yes. who are in crisis and, and where is this house uh, located in Woodland. In, in Woodland, Woodland. Yeah. I see. Now, the first question that comes to mind, you mentioned high school students and young people, is are these uh, suicide prevention programs uh, open to everybody, no matter what the age? Yeah, I think it's important to kind of um, highlight that there are crisis lines are 24 hours a day available. Anybody who calls, we will help them, and the calls, of course, are free of charge. Um, our suicide survivor support group, that's free of charge as well for people who have lost somebody to suicide. And um, our classroom program, where we go into the mm -hmm. uh, junior high and high school programs, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. um, funded partially through some of the school districts and the county, as well as um, grants. And we will display uh, the uh, 24 hours crisis lines uh, towards the end of our uh, interview so that people can actually make a note and uh, and call if necessary. And these calls, uh, well, before we get ahead about uh, what type of calls you're getting, uh, let's talk, uh, and Sandra or Ting Ting, whoever wants to respond, about what is this uh, uh, with this organizations that you are directors of. Can you uh, explain to me what it is? 
Um, well, it, suicide prevention is, is it a non-profit? It's a non-profit organization. Yeah, it's We've, a non-profit, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have anything to do per se with the state, right? Right. It's an independent private non-profit. Yes. We do have um, a variety of county-related funding and um, private um, grants donations. and donations yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. And um, United Way and those kinds of yes. um, opportunities. And when when was this created? This uh, this organization created? Do you remember? Don't have to be very specific. I, I, I wasn't there, but it was it was uh, in 1966. Oh my or goodness! It, like, yeah, so yeah. we are one of the oldest. Right? One of the one of the oldest crisis lines actually in the entire country. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, that's very interesting. Yes, and about how many people do you have there? Staff, directors, and others. Roughly, mm -hmm. just to give an idea to to our viewers of how big you are or how small you yeah. are, <laughs> we have um, we have about seven part time um, staff. They're all part time, and then at any given time, we have maybe about thirty five to forty five volunteers. Our crisis line is run um, solely by it's answered solely by volunteers, trained volunteers. I see, and and I like the idea of them being trained because yes. you can do more harm than good <laughs> if you're not trained. Yes, so uh, so uh, Sandra, tell tell us uh, about what your role consists of as a clinical supervisor. Well, my role really is to support the crisis line volunteers and doing the good work that they do. Uh, so when our volunteers have a call that maybe they want to just uh, check and see if they uh, offered the right kind of support, if there were any resources that maybe they didn't consider, or sometimes uh, a volunteer might just like to debrief after a particular call. Yes. Um, you know, our volunteers are, are trained and expected to really deal with any issue that a caller brings forth. Um, and um, some, sometimes uh, people just kind of want to talk about it afterwards, which we really encourage our volunteers to do so that they're really in a good place to be able to listen and support people. And also uh, learn from experience mm -hmm. because I'm sure you're getting all the whole spectrum of callers and calls and the type of problems they have. Isn't that correct? Right. If I mean, if you imagine yeah. what people go through in you know in their lifespan, any of those issues could be presented to to any given volunteer on the crisis line. So, we we. Um, emphasize in our training that really the important skill that uh, the volunteers use regardless of what the issue someone presents is that they're really presenting themselves as an empathic listener and somebody who can be there and be supportive, helpful, um, can be aware of the resources if, if it's a real kind of emergency. Yes, um, yes, I was going to ask if, uh, if it's critical. Uh, what do you do? Uh, do you, how do you refer them, or how do you follow up these calls? Uh, perhaps I should ask uh, I should ask Ting Ting about this, or both of you, whoever. You know, like give me an example, a, a concrete example of a call, a real caller, obviously no names, uh -huh. and then the type of uh, how he or she approached the the caller, the line, and what do you do about it? Mm -hmm. Can you do that for us? Yeah, yes. we get a variety of different calls, um, but an example of one where you might want to refer them somewhere is um, we'll get people that call that might be worried about someone in their life. So like a parent worried about their child or somebody, you know, my friend's been posting this thing on Facebook, should I be worried? So um, a large part of what we do is check in with the person who's calling, you know, see what's going on and then do what's called a lethality assessment through the person, you know, well, what has that person said? And um, what have they said to you? You know, where are they? You know, do they have the means mm -hmm. to, you know, do something to harm themselves? And then from there, we kind of help them figure out what is the next best step. So is this something where maybe they have to send out help, mm -hmm. i.e., you know, maybe call, you know, the police or 911 or something? Or is this something where, you know, they can give that person our number, something like that. So we, or is that something where they need a community resource? Maybe mm -hmm. the person needs help finding therapy resources for their mm -hmm. friend or something mm -hmm. like that, so. Well, that's very yeah. interesting. I, uh, one thing comes to mind is, um, do you have a mechanism or a way, perhaps not, but I'm asking, uh, to validate these calls that they're not 
spoofings or uh, frauds or do you have anything like that? Well, really, you know, even if somebody were to call and be sort of spoofing, um, we're going to take it seriously. Uh, yes. we, you know, it's just it's not the kind of thing Good where answer. you want to really, Good uh, you know, yes. think somebody's joking. So yes. some, you know, and, and on occasion we've had the teenager call where you can kind yes. of hear the friends in the background laughing. But really, it's it that's a you ignore very, that. it, it's yeah. it's a very small number of times that that happens and. Um, you know, for the most part, we're, we're really wanting to uh, communicate to anybody who calls that it's an important topic, and you know, we want we want to know more about what's going on for them, and so you know, the the occasional you know te teen call that's not serious. Sometimes also it could be a teen who's sort of prank calling because they're thinking maybe they really actually might need to call someday, that's right. um, or that's have thought about calling, that, and that's very and it's also yes. a way to kind of test it out and call and see what are they going to say to me and you know what will happen if I call. Yes, so, sort of like, um, uh, yeah, test as yeah. you said. Um, do you take the, the name and phone number of this person? Should you have to uh, contact him or her in an emergency or? Uh? Well, you know, I think one thing to think about is that, um, you know, Roughly 90% of our calls aren't emergencies. We're really encouraging people to call when you're in a crisis or when you're distressed or when you need somebody to talk to. And to really, you know, call, call us if it's an emergency, but also call us before it gets to that point. So we'll sort of distinguish between like emergency calls where, yeah, in an emergency call, we're going to ask a person, what's your name? What's your address? What's your phone number? Because we might need to get help to them, mm -hmm. which would mm -hmm. could be you know nine one one kinds of resources, mm -hmm. um, but in general we also um, we advertise that the crisis line is confidential and anonymous. So if we're not concerned about needing to get life and death kind of um, help out to somebody, yes. you know we really will ask somebody for their name mostly so that we can use it in conversation I so see. that we don't have yes. to say, you know, oh, yes. hey, you, that we could say, Lynn, That's you know, right. tell me more about what you were saying earlier about such and such. Yes, um, yes, that and, makes perfect sense. Yeah. But uh, stress on the fact this is very confidential mm -hmm. and uh, hence people will be more willing to come and, uh, I mean, and talk to you. Exactly. Yes. Um, it's, it's a difficult role to be a volunteer on a, uh, on a suicide prevention uh, so basically, how long does your training last for these volunteers? Is, does it depend on the volunteers or what do you teach them? Do you teach them case, uh, case, um, uh, cases or how do you teach? There's a lot of components to the training actually. It comes out to, um, with everything, uh, over 40 hours of training. So there's. 40. Yeah, so we mm -hmm. run um, usually spring and fall trainings. And so they're ones where you come in and then we talk about just the variety of different calls you might get, um, different situations you might have to respond to and how to respond to them. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely, as you said, it's a lot of, it's, you know, it's a lot of pressure. It's, it definitely mm -hmm. is, you know, it's not for everybody, but for everybody. but our volunteers are great. It's, yes. Yeah. And how do you screen your volunteers? Do you have some tests for them, or you're just by talking and interviewing them? We're really looking for people who have um, good interpersonal skills to begin with. Um, you know, generally somebody who reaches out to suicide prevention wanting to volunteer is probably going to come with those kinds of skills because yes. those are the folks who are interested yes. in doing that yes. kind of work. Yes, so, and it's not an easy topic. Uh, right, so people really, for the most part, kind of self-select, um, you know, that uh, people who are not um, good in delicate situations or in high pressure situations really aren't going to reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in volunteering at suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every once in a while we do talk to people who are interested in volunteering who um, maybe aren't really in a good place to do it right now. Maybe they lost a family member to suicide mm -hmm. recently um, and that's kind of triggered their desire to help. And, you know, in those kinds of cases, we would really want that person to kind of take care of themselves first. Don't don't start to volunteer as part of your healing this soon. Yes. Um, you know, and we're looking for people um, who are also going to be able to um, be on the crisis line for a while because it is the kind of thing where you get 
uh, if you feel more comfortable over time. Yes. And we really like volunteers who are going to be able to, of course, they need to commit to the entire training program. Yes. And, um, and to be able to commit to doing, you know, weekly shifts um, mm -hmm. consistently mm -hmm. so that they are mm -hmm. able to so you can hone their skills and yes and so that we can yes. make sure that there's somebody there 24 7 yes that's that's really important I was wondering um, you know there's been a lot of talk about uh, uh, former servicemen um, that's uh, coming from these wars uh, do you get calls from them as well you know, honestly, I don't think we've really gotten a lot of calls from mm -hmm. vets because they um, they tend to have um, there's veterans hotlines. Yeah. I yeah. think that they call. Yeah, it's a very it's somewhat a, I think of a tight knit kind of circle. More specific. Um, yes. And and I think a lot of um, suicide is such a stigmatized issue. Um, the, and. Uh, mental health issues in the military, that's also a very stigmatized yeah. kind of issue. It's Unfortunately, very... Unfortunately, yeah. yes. And I yes. think that's part of what has, uh, what leads to a lot of these terrible outcomes that we've seen in the media is that it's mm -hmm. really hard if you're in, in the military to reach out for mental health care without being concerned that you're going to jeopardize your career. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of nuances mm -hmm. to dealing with, with mm -hmm. veterans. And um, we certainly would be prepared to talk with a veteran who called because it's, it's really the same issues. Uh, they just of have you know, a lot yeah. of, um, of career concerns yes. around their, their yes. mental health issues. Yes. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those, it's also um, just kind of one of the unfortunate parts of dealing with a stigmatized issue is that people yes. don't reach out. We, we're not, we can't call people and if we, you know, we, well, if we hear about somebody who's suicidal, actually we do reach out to call them. But if we don't know about somebody, mm -hmm. you know, people sitting mm -hmm. quietly in their homes, depressed mm -hmm. and suicidal, of course. you know, their phone's not going to ring. Uh, they need to call us. Yes. And that's the hard thing about yes. Uh, suicide and, education is really how making do you them do that. advertise to how, what is your outreach obviously you have limited budget uh, uh, so how do you make yourself known to the community I heard that you have a fundraiser come up uh, in November isn't that we right do. we do yeah. we have one on November 30th um, mm -hmm. it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving, it's from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Davis Oddfellows Lodge, which is in downtown Davis. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of outreach, we do a variety of presentations and, uh, to um, organizations and companies around uh, Yolo County. You know, we have a website, Facebook, um, and we, you know, we hand out a lot of materials to like local mental health professionals, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, to kind of put it out there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, we have a we now have a toll free number, and we actually just joined the um, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Oh, great! And so, um, and as a matter of fact, I wanted uh, to display uh, these uh, twenty four hours crisis uh, lines, uh, and uh, as soon as they display, so basically these are the twenty four hours crisis line. So in Davis is uh, five three zero. 756-5000, and then in Woodland is 536-666-7778, and in West Sacramento is 916-372-6565, and we're going to display them again at the end of the interview so people have will have had time to make a note. Mm -hmm. So these are... 24 hours yes. mm -hmm. uh, phone numbers, and uh, they're not toll free, but they're local numbers, correct? Yeah, they're, and they're local numbers, and when we first set up the crisis lines, that was back in the day where um, everybody didn't have cell phones, and that's you right. know, making, making your phone calls, you know, if, if you made a toll call, you were paying, you know, uh, yes. 10 cents a minute for every phone call. So it tends not to be the barrier that it used to be before. That's right. Uh, Very good point. So yes. we've tried to have, the reason we have three different lines for the community is just so that it, it, it has more of a community feel. But yes. also we know that there's other parts of the county that aren't Davis Woodland or West Sacramento, the more rural areas, and we would encourage those folks to just call whichever number um, they, they want They want. They want yes. to call. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, so um, you mentioned the the 
the veterinary hospital um, hotline. Uh, do you know of other organizations, uh, I mean, other hotlines in this area uh, that, yeah? Yeah, there's, um, there's centers th throughout the state. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're, then, yeah, we're one of many kind of crisis lines in the state. In terms of local crisis lines, there's mm -hmm. um, another organization runs a crisis line for um, for victims of sexual assault and domestic violence, and right. um, so they they um, do a similar kind of operation. Mm -hmm. um, our line also, as Ting Ting mentioned, we're, we're going to become part of the National, the National Lifeline yes. Network. So yes. there's an 800 number that um, that if local individuals call that number, um, that Christ, that call will get routed to our center. Oh, that's now. wonderful. Um, yes, and and by the way, please I encourage you to go to their website, which is Yolo County Suicide Prevention and Crisis dot Org. I believe I said it all. <laughs> I think it's uh, County.org. So all one Suicide prevention Yolo County dot org. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, what other services do you provide? I mean, this is obviously the most crucial one. But uh, what else do you do? Well, yeah. So our, you know, the most most of our services are really anchoring on the twenty four hour crisis line, and then. Um, doing outreach to really encourage people to use those numbers when they are in crisis. So, mm -hmm. you know, even, so we've got the crisis line and then we have our um, outreach to schools program and, you know, talking about the crisis line and reaching out for help is a really important component of that. And um, uh, the, and the, and then of course the survivor support group, which is held um, three times a year, roughly mm -hmm. for, um, for, for a several week period um, for individuals who are, are coming in after having lost someone to suicide and it's yes, a good support. Yes, and that's a very interesting, you alluded to that earlier. Uh, in other words, you have a support group for families and friends of uh, victims of suicide. Right. And that certainly uh, uh, it must be a most helpful program. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine how, how yeah dreadful it must be to lose someone to suicide. So that's a wonderful thing. So what to switch gears, I'd like to know a little more about yourselves now that you've talked about what you do. So who wants to start? Do you want to start, Sandra? Yeah, well, um, I'm, lo I'm local to Davis and I, you know, I've been with suicide prevention uh, now, um, I guess I'm going on 25 years with suicide prevention. I started My in, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very long time. I started. You in, must have been a baby. Yes. When you joined. <laughs> I, was in, I was in college, actually. But yeah, so um, I started in 1989 as a volunteer. Yes. And then I've been um, employed with the agency for the most part um, since 1991. So um, I've got a long history with the organization. Um, in It's always been a part-time job for me. So I've always mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, kind of worked suicide prevention um, in the evening trainings and, the, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. those kinds of things. And I then, imagine you have a family. Yes, I yes. do. I do. I, I, I live locally yeah. and I, I have a, a husband and child and I have a yeah. son. Yeah, so. Do you derive a lot of satisfaction from your work? Yeah, you know, it's um, when you work in a nonprofit, you get very connected to the issue. And so that's kind of, I think, what's, you know, kept me connected for Mm -hmm. uh, for for 25 years and um, and so you know it's been a part of my son's life since he was born coming Good to fact. fundraisers and coming to meetings and uh, so as a, a wonderful yeah, yeah, a so. wonderful what about you Ting Ting tell us your story <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also a local I came here in eighth grade <laughs> to Davis <laughs> and I went to Emerson and then Davis High and then UC Davis um, and then uh, I started volunteering while I was in college as well in 2006 and I've been with them since we've um, we've been really lucky we have a lot of um, staff that are long timers mm -hmm. so it's, and it's I suppose really you also to try to maybe recruit in a way from UC Davis for your volunteers. I it, imagine that you um, have some. Yeah, the university is a huge uh, resource. resource for volunteers for us, particularly um, students who are in the psychology majors. 
um, they often reach out to us because they're looking for some real life experience that they can do to kind of test out if this is a of field course. they really want to go into. Of course. And mm. and by the way, how do how can volunteers reach you? Is there a place in on the website where they can yes. sign up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a place on the website where they can find our contact information and they can either call for more information or they can email us, okay. both of which are fine. Well, oh, yeah. uh, that, that sounds wonderful. Let's uh, display uh, the uh, crisis lines one more time and here they are. And uh, again, I'm going to, um, Davis is 530-756-5000. And Woodland is 530-666-7778, sorry. And uh, West Sacramento is 916-372-6565. Well, our time is up, I'm afraid, but it was wonderful to have you here in the studio. And thank you so much for all the wonderful uh, important work for you, that you do for our community. We're very grateful to you. And uh, this is it. So Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you all of you for watching. Um, you can uh, watch this, you can stream this uh, episode again by going to dctv.davismedia.org and also we're on YouTube. Uh, but we also broadcast, of course, and uh, on, on community television, Comcast Channel 15, and or uh, AT&T, sorry, and AT&T U-verse Menu 99. So thank you very much for watching in the studio. From all of us here at Davis Media Access, we say goodbye and hope to see you next time. Thank you.